life is so backwards in the sense of um, I had um, gotten into wrestling before I even knew to lock up. Um, so, so that's number one, which is sounds bizarre and everything. Yeah. And my brain just works way differently. Um, but as far as mental health, um, I've struggled with anxiety and depression as long as I could remember. Um, I, I, I don't really remember if maybe as a kid, I mean, I'm sure it did, but, um, I want to say I got out of gymnastics before, um, before like the mental struggle, so to speak. Um, you know, like I was, always very hard on myself as an athlete and everything. But I think at the age I got out of gymnastics, I didn't really deal with it in that aspect um, over here. But then I dealt with it over here. I dealt very, very badly with, again, anxiety and depression in high school. And I feel like I didn't have like, um, like an athletic background to kind of, um, you know, to go. Um, so I, maybe I, I feel like looking back at it, I believe in high school, um, I'm not sure when maybe my senior year, um, I developed a very, very bad eating disorder. Um, and you know, at the time, like, of course you don't realize there's a problem until there's a problem and now everything's on fire and we, everyone's screaming. You don't know what's going on. Right. Yeah. So, um, I dealt very, very badly with eating disorders. Um, and then on top of anxiety and depression, it's just, uh, it goes back to the feeling of not feeling like you're good enough. And it is just the worst struggle and pain and feeling. I would not wish it upon anyone, but in the same, in the same breath, I wouldn't take that struggle away from me. Um, It's, oh man, I feel like it's just made me more compassionate towards myself mostly, um, but as others as well. And then just um, being the athlete and the way my brain functions, um, I had this crazy idea, okay, I never necessarily wanted to be super skinny. Um, I just always wanted to be like strong. And I would look at these girls in fitness magazines. And um, since the age of four, I had very defined shoulders and delts because I did gymnastics. So I mean, at the end of the day, I was never going to be the skinny little girl, you know. Um, But then I used my eating disorder to my advantage. Um, I had researched how to work out, how to weight train. I believe I was, I was 18 when I started to weight train. And, um, that was a while ago at this point, (laughs) but you know, there was not (laughs) girls in the gym lifting weights. If it was, it was very few. It was maybe me and like the strong fitness stay at home mom next to me that like knew what she was doing. And, I researched and I was like, okay, like you, you're eating like 2000 calories on this. Like, okay, cool. Um, you know, so I kind of knew if I had a competition or a show and I had to look a certain way, I was like, I'm not going to embarrass myself and not look how I should on the stage. So it really, the bodybuilding diet forced me to eat. Um, and then Mm -hmm. in the same hand, it kind of, it kind of transpired and maybe made the eating disorder a little worse, so forth and so on. Um, but you know, it's just all the struggles in life. Like, you know, now, um, I, I feel like sure, maybe I am recovered, so to speak, but it's just, um, you know, you just learn, I don't want to say to, to deal with it, but you learn to use it to your advantages. Um, and then I, I did competitions from there and, you know, I still struggle daily, um, with certain things, but I just try to be more mindful and nicer to myself. And like the gym has always been my outlet in the sense of it's somewhere I can go and I can let out this, Uh, whatever I might be feeling. If I'm super happy, I'm going to have a good workout. If I'm really mad, I'm going to have a good workout. So it's just like (laughs) sort of 
an outlet for me. Um, but then, you know, don't get me wrong. There are some days where you just have this anxiety or depression and you're like, dang, I don't even want to get up and get moving. So then it's like, you struggle with that as well. And it's a very fine, hard balancing act. And, um, you know, it's just, I also, um, going back to mental health, you know, as we're on the topic, I, I take medicine. I mean, like, I don't know why people put such a stigma on like, oh, if you take that, that's bad for you. Or like, you're a failure. It's like, no, (laughs) like you're, you're acknowledging that your body cannot create enough serotonin on its own. And in order for you to be the best version or best athlete or something else, I feel like you need to address it before um, it kind of, you know, becomes, I don't want to say a major issue, but I've been there before. And I truthfully believe um, any form of therapy is great. I read a lot of self help books. Um, (laughs) I, I don't prefer talking to someone. It just never worked for me. Um, so I feel like, you know, people need to stop putting a, a bad stigma on mental health and, you know, um, I feel like a lot more athletes struggle with it than we speak about and is something that I, I don't want to use the word was embarrassed of, but I kind of felt like, um, like I just shouldn't have this because I was an athlete and it just, you know, it goes to show that mental health doesn't pick and choose like, Oh, you're pretty and you're an athlete. Um, so we're going to skip you, but you, yeah, no, mm, you're going to get it. And it's just like, you know, I think most athletes have it and, it's something we need to talk about more. I fully agree. And and thank you for sharing your story. Cause I know that that is, like you said, you don't know, like talking to other people about it. Yeah. So you telling, talking to us about it is, it, I really want to, I really appreciate that. And I do, sure. like you said, I think we need to have, bring more attention and let it be okay to have these thoughts, have these feelings that, people are not okay all the time like you know we put so much pressure as a society like okay I'll go to we'll say basketball or football football here in America is the number one sport all the way around uh those athletes if they don't win that Sunday the entire city for the most part like booze them and shuts them out until next week where they have another chance just to be better and it's right, like you can't, right. you're putting an entire city's like the pressure on them or people <laughs> in like other cities that because they moved or whatever but it just it has to be okay to if you don't lose you never win because you never learn to be a winner from winning all the time like it just it doesn't I work i love way. that If you can say that again, and I will get it tattooed on my (laughs) palm because um, I used to view losing, so to speak, um, like not even like a game or like say like I'm at the gym as like just a waste. But it's like nowadays with my mindset, um, mindset is huge. Um, You know, I just try to take so to speak, a loss, a win from it. What did I actually learn from either this performance, this practice, this workout that I can do better, even 1% better tomorrow. And, you know, if I can apply one thing that I did good or did bad, as long as I know from it to apply next time, it's not really a loss. So, you know, it's, couldn't say better what you said it's a win and honestly that's the that's the hardest thing that um I feel like not even as an athlete but as a human being that I need to realize and really really apply more because I could sit here till I'm blue in the face and (laughs) I will I will not lie to you I had 
not such a great um, wrestling match the other weekend. And it's just one of those things where like I beat myself up about it. And I was in my head about it for like a good week and a half. I mean, almost two weeks now, if I'm sitting here talking to you about it, it is still affected me. Right. You know, um, but at the end of the day, I, I'm using that as fuel right now. I'm in the gym and I'm like, all right, I have to get better. I'm at wrestling practice. And it's just like, okay, like I'm still learning from that one mistake. Um, So I don't necessarily even want to call it a mistake because I'm using it as fuel to be better all around. That's perfect. I love that you're, you're using, I mean, obviously it is still bothering you, but (laughs) you're turning it into fuel and there will be a point where it doesn't bother you. Like you might look back on it and be like, Oh yeah, that match. Oh, that was awful. But the next one or the next two or the next three or four or five matches will be better because that one match in your head didn't go the way you wanted it to. So it's good. Absolutely. It obviously was bad when it happened, but in the long run, it'll be a good thing. Yeah. I don't no, know. I it might, second. it might be a funny story to talk about okay. one day, but like this will keep me up for the next 25 years of my life. <laughs> like <laughs> that thought right before you fall asleep. And I'd be like, Oh my God, remember that one time I had a really bad wrestling match. It will keep me up forever. <laughs> we are pretend like it won't, but it will. <laughs> well, just keep a notepad by your, by your bed. And so right. whenever you do wake up, you can be like, okay, I can do this better. All right. Next. <laughs> yes. And jot it down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now I have a segment on the show. I call it the five count. It's uh, five just random questions. Just answer as quick as possible. I, I love this. Okay. Okay. Uh, number one, what is your cheat meal of choice? Hamburg- uh, bacon cheeseburger. <laughs> oh, bacon cheeseburger. Nice. Yeah. Uh, if, oh, if you were to own a brewery, distillery, winery, or coffee shop, which one would you own and what would the name be? Coffee shop. Um, okay. Cool beans. I love that. <laughs> but but that's that's already a coffee shop down the shore. So I'll have to like ah. guess. There's one by me, and I think it's the cutest place ever. I know this is supposed to be fast, but no, um, but with this coffee place inside of it, um, there's psychics, and I, I maybe go, but oh. whatever. Um, and, and you like set up an appointment and it's called cool beans. So I want I want to get in on that cool beans. <laughs> yeah, cool bean franchise. I like that. Yeah. Uh if you had four guests for dinner, uh, past or present, who would they be? Michael Scott. Um, oh, no. A character him. or actual Steve Carell? Hmm. Character. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Larry David, Marilyn Monroe. Good mix. Oh, good. One of my ex-boyfriends. I don't care who it is. I just feel like that would be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and then like my mom that was off Perfect. the top of my head so I don't I don't know I'm not sure if I would want to be at the dinner party but like I'll watch from afar <laughs> right. I did see you post the other day about having all of your exes in a uh, uh no rules uh fans bring weapons and your mom's the special guest yes. I thought that was great <laughs> I think that would be really funny um honestly there's no bad blood between me and any of my exes like right. if I ran any of them and chatted with them i'm sure it would be fine but i would pay to see that match (laughs) oh for sure i think a lot of people would yeah um who or what inspires you um oh my god this one this one's gonna be like cliche but like my father um honestly he just like is the most amazing human being and like he just has this like hard exterior show but at the end of the day like um He's literally, I've come to him with all of these crazy dreams of mine. And this man will just literally be like, okay. And then he'll like come home later, like after we talked or like whenever I see him next and he'll have like a printout, like Google sheet of like how to do whatever, like, like I remember with bodybuilding, he like printed out like a how to like step of like how to win. And then like, when I had this crazy idea of wrestling, he would like bring me these spreadsheets and he'd be like, okay, this is how we're going to do it. And so he just inspires me. Um, cause he's just freaking cool and believes in all of my crazy ideas, but more importantly, never tried to make me, um, do something I didn't want to do. And he just inspires me to literally keep going and do all of these crazy things.
Thank you so much for Nikki Duke and Ariel Sky, same person, being on the show today. Uh, wow, Women of Wrestling is such a great show, and I love having even more women on this show. Today.